Hi, I'm Nick Raboy, and in this tutorial, we're going to see how to use MongoDB with Netlify serverless functions in a Netlify web application. So we're going to be exploring the serverless experience, but with MongoDB included. Now to accomplish this project today, you will need a few things prior to getting started. So you will need a MongoDB Atlas account. You can go ahead and deploy a free cluster. So an M0 size cluster to be successful with this particular tutorial. You will also need a Netlify account. We're going to be using the Netlify CLI for this example, but there are other ways to work with Netlify and they will still work with the material found in this tutorial. But just note that we will be using the CLI. Now up on my screen, you'll notice that I do have MongoDB Atlas up and loaded. Um, I do already have a cluster deployed. And for this particular example, we're gonna be using a particular database and collection. So in this particular collection, I'm gonna be using the sample data set called Sample Mflix, and I'm gonna be using the Movies Collection. Now, it really isn't too important when it comes to which database or which collection we plan to use, because that's kind of out of the scope of this particular tutorial. Our main focus will be actually connecting to MongoDB from a serverless function in Netlify, and then just doing a simple query. And everything else that comes after will be fairly simplistic if you wanted to explore further on your own. Now to get the sample database and collection up and going, go ahead and go to your root MongoDB Atlas dashboard. Click on the ellipsis menu and then say load sample data set. And several data sets will be loaded, including that sample Mflix database, as well as the movies collection. I also do already have my network access rules and my database access rules configured. Those are out of the scope of this particular tutorial, but it can be done as simply as just adding your IP address and creating a user that has access to the particular database and collection. Now let's dive into the actual development of our project. So the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to create a new Netlify project. So open up a command prompt. Uh, this is assuming that you already have the Netlify CLI ready to go. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new project directory on my desktop, for example. I'm gonna call this one example project. And I'm gonna navigate into it. And I'm gonna say Netlify sites create. Now it's gonna present me with a few steps that I have to follow in order to create an application and link it to my Netlify account. So I'm gonna choose the team. So it's Enver Boy's team in this case. And I'm gonna set up a project name. I'm just gonna call it example project, I don't know, zero. And I'm gonna hit enter. And it's gonna give me a URL for finding my application. I can go into my Netlify dashboard, it will show up. But for the most part, everything that we plan to do in this particular tutorial can be done directly with the CLI. We shouldn't really have to go into the Netlify dashboard to progress with anything that we plan on doing. Great, so with that done, let's go ahead and open up that project in a code editor of our choice. I'm gonna be using Visual Studio Code, but ultimately it doesn't matter what you choose. With the project up and running, you'll notice that we do have a Netlify directory as well as a git ignore. We will be traversing the Netlify directory coming up when it comes to creating our functions. But for now, let's go ahead and proceed with a few more command line commands in order to correctly lay the foundation of our project. So the first command that I wanna run within this particular project directory is I wanna say Netlify, and I wanna say functions create, and I want to name the function that I plan to create. So I'm gonna say name, and I'm gonna say for this example, get underscore movies. Now the naming convention doesn't truly matter, but because we're gonna be working with the movies collection, I figured it makes sense that if we want to retrieve movies, it might make sense to call it get movies in this case. So let's go ahead and give it a path. I'm gonna use the default path in this example. I'm gonna say that I want to use JavaScript and I want to choose the very basic hello world example. All right. So we actually do have a Netlify functions get movies folder with a getmovies.js file. But before we start adding code to this particular file, we do need to install a few dependencies to get the job done. So within our terminal, go ahead and say npm install MongoDB. And this is going to install the MongoDB Node.js driver. Now there's one more dependency that you may need depending on your operating system. Netlify in the long run does not require this, but because I'm on Windows, it does make sense for me uh, if I wanted to test this locally. So what I'm gonna say is I'm gonna say npm install.env. 
And what this allows is it allows me to use environment variables in my local Windows environment without having to jump through too many hoops to get the job done. Because when it comes to our MongoDB credentials, we're going to be storing them as environment variables with Netlify, which uh, is good for safety because you don't want to hard code any of your username and password or etc. So I'm going to go ahead and clear that. At this point, we can start developing our Netlify function. So this is going to be powering our dynamic or ad hoc aspect within our website or our web application. Now, if you've ever worked with a serverless function before, you know that they may not play nice when it comes to a database because there are a few reasons for that. Well, one, you don't know when that function is going to be alive or sleeping or shut down, etc. So you don't want to try to use it and find out that there's no database connection currently established because then you're going to get an error. You don't want to try to establish a database connection every function call because then what's going to happen is you're going to create too many concurrent connections with your database and cause new problems. So basically what we want to do is we want to create a global variable to our function, which will exist for as long as the function exists, but when it shuts down, then it'll be reestablished and that will prevent us from trying to spin up too many connections or no connections at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear this particular getmovies.js file. And we're going to start by including our MongoDB Node.js driver. Next up, we're going to include the .env package that we installed. So that way we can use environment variables, specifically on Windows. This will work for Mac, Windows, and Linux, as well as Netlify. So you're not going to cause yourself any damage by using it, or uh, if you're not using Windows, by not using it. Um, so let's go ahead and head over to the documentation for .env. And to use it, it's basically just one line. So we're going to say require.env config, and we're good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and paste that in. All right, so we're good to go at this point. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to get our uh, MongoDB client established with our MongoDB URI string. Now, we don't have a URI string defined, so what we want to do is we want to create a .env file, which holds all of our environment variables. And when we open up that file, let's go ahead and add a few things. Let's go ahead and say MongoDB URI equals, we're going to say MongoDB database equals MongoDB collection equals. Uh, and this is where we're going to fill in the gaps. So we know that our database is going to be called sample Enflix. So let's go ahead and add it. We know that our collection is going to be movies. So let's add it. The URI is a little different though. We do have to get that from our MongoDB Atlas dashboard. So within the MongoDB Atlas dashboard, what you can do is you can say connect for your collection, say connect your application, and then we can copy the URI string depending on the programming language that you want to use. So we're gonna use Node.js and we're gonna be using 4.1 or later. So I can say copy. I'm gonna go back into our Visual Studio code. I'm gonna paste that in. You'll notice that the username and password has not been filled yet. So I'm going to fill that in. And at this point, we're able to start using MongoDB, or at least these variables for MongoDB. So go back into the getmovies.js file, and let's go ahead and add the following. We're going to say constant Mongo client equals new Mongo client. And we're going to use our environment variable. So I'm going to say process.env dot mongodb uri as defined in the dot env file i'm going to say constant and i'm going to say client promise and i'm going to say mongo client dot connect now the client promise is going to be the variable that we try to use within our handler function so if our function does not exist because this is the first time we're trying to use it or it's shut down for whatever reason uh, we'll get a new client promise and we'll be able to use it within our handler function uh, without any kind of issues. So let's go ahead and create that handler function. So we're going to say constant handler equals async. We're going to say event. And let's go ahead and start adding our code. Because we're going to be using async, because our connections to our database are not synchronous, we need to use a try catch block so that way we can catch any exceptions that should happen because we're going to be using await rather than the long form promise method. So we're going to say try and I'm going to say catch. I'm going to say it error and we're going to say return and we're going to say status code 
We're going to say 500, maybe a server error or something similar. And we're going to say body, and that's going to be error.toString. So if there's a problem, we're going to return it as such. Otherwise, let's go ahead and start working with our database. So we're going to say constant database, and we're going to say await. So we're going to wait for the client promise to resolve. And then once it does, we're going to get our database. And we can get that from our environment variable. So we're going to say process.env.mongodb database. Next up, we're going to get that collection that we plan to use. So we're going to say constant collection equals database.collection process.env.mongodb collection. And we're going to save it. Now, we're not actually doing anything yet. We're just getting a handle to our database and our collection after establishing a connection to MongoDB. Let's go ahead and export this particular handler function. So we're going to say module.exports equals handler. Now, I'd like to say that I took credit for most of this code here, but actually, if you use the Hello World example for Netlify, pretty much everything except for the contents of the handler method and the MongoDB specific stuff was provided. Uh, so for example, it did provide a foundation to work with. We just started it from scratch in this example. All right, so let's actually add some logic to our handler function. So that way it actually does something that we can use inside of our web application. So underneath the collection line, let's go ahead and add the following. Let's go ahead and say constant results equals await collection dot find. We will not provide a find criteria in this example. So what we're doing here is we are getting all of the documents that might exist in our collection. So our movies collection. Now that particular sample data set does have quite a few movies. So instead, let's go ahead and limit the results. So we're going to limit the results to 10 records. And I'm going to say two array because we don't want to use cursors for this particular example. Now that we potentially have results, we want to return those results to whatever's requesting them. So we're going to say return. And we're going to say status code 200 and we're going to say body and we're going to say json dot stringify and we're going to say results so what's happening is we're returning a 200 response which is a success and we are stringifying our json results that came back from this find operation and in theory we should have 10 records or less being returned and in our case because we are using a sample data set we are definitely going to have 10 records so let's go ahead and save it. Now we're not going to test it yet. We're actually going to create some basic HTML to consume data from this particular function. So within your project, go ahead and create a new file. This is going to be at the root of your project, not within the Netlify directory. I'm going to call it index.html. Now inside of the index.html file, let's start adding some basic HTML boilerplate or foundation. So I'm going to say doc type. I'm going to give it uh, the basic HTML tags. And then I'm going to give it a script tag because that's where we plan to do a lot of our logic for actually interacting with the function itself. All right, so we have the foundation. Now let's go ahead and add some other basic HTML. So that way when we test it, if something fails for any reason, we at least see something on the screen. It'll help us when it comes to troubleshooting. All right, so we have a header. Uh, let's go ahead and add a placeholder. So the idea behind this example is we're getting a list of movies, potentially 10, definitely 10 in this example. Let's go ahead and add them to a list on the page. So the list will be empty by default. We'll make a request to our function. We'll get 10 records and we will render them on the screen. To do that, we will need a placeholder HTML DOM element. So let's say UL for unordered list. Let's give it an ID so that way we have a proper placeholder. I'm going to call it movies. And we're going to close that tag. The script is where we're going to do most of our action here. Um, so this is going to be an asynchronous event because we are communicating with a function and this function is communicating asynchronously with our database. So let's go ahead and say async. And there's other ways to do this as well. This isn't the only way, but this is the way that's going to work for this particular example, at least the way that I want to do it. And let's go ahead and say let results equals await. And we're going to do a fetch. So fetch is pretty common when it comes to browser-based JavaScript. So we're going to say fetch and we're going to fetch based on the function directory. Now in our directory structure, we do have Netlify without a period, 
But when it comes to actually using our function, we do have to prefix it with a period. So I'm gonna say period Netlify slash functions slash get underscore movies. So that's where we'll be able to access our endpoint. And that's essentially what it is. We have a serverless function in Netlify, but we work with it as if we would work with a standard RESTful API endpoint. What we're gonna do next is we are gonna process the response into proper JSON. So we're gonna say then, and we're gonna say response, response.json. So we're waiting for our results. And when we have them, let's go ahead and use them now. And what we could do is we could do the try catch uh, and we probably should. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna say try. We're gonna catch the error because we are working with promises and the async and await. So if we catch it, we're just gonna say console.error and we're gonna say whatever the error was. Perfect. So we have the results. Let's go ahead and continue. Let's go ahead and say results dot for each. And we're gonna look at each result individually. So we're gonna say result. And this is where we add them to our unordered list. So we're gonna say constant list item. And we're gonna say document dot create element. And we're gonna say li for list item. We're gonna say list item dot inner text equals result dot title. So this would be the movie title if you look at your movies collection. And we're gonna say document dot get element by ID. And we're gonna reference our movies placeholder from line eight. So we're gonna say movies. And we're gonna say append child. And the child that we append is list item. So essentially what's happening here once more is we're getting our results, which is gonna be 10, hopefully. We're gonna loop through each one of those results. We're gonna create a new list item. We're gonna set the title of that result to that particular list item. And we're gonna add it to our unordered list. So let's go ahead and save it. So at this point, what we can do is we can say Netlify dev. So let's give it a try. So we're gonna say Netlify dev. What it did was it started a local development server and it opened up my web browser on localhost and it is showing us exactly what we had added to our HTML page. So if I zoom in, we have 10 different movie titles that we obtained through a Netlify serverless function that communicated with MongoDB. We're not quite done yet though. So in this example, I'm using Netlify Dev, which is a local development server, which doesn't truly reflect what we're gonna see within Netlify for real. Uh, for example, we do have our environment variable file with .env. Actually, what we want to do is we want to add our environment variables to our Netlify project so that way they can be consumed directly from Netlify rather than our .env file. So let's go ahead and open up our command prompt for our project and we're gonna add a few of our variables. So what we need to do is we need to use our Netlify CLI to add our environment variable. So I'm gonna go into my .env file where I have my URI, the database and collection, and I'm going to start creating Netlify environment variables. So I could say Netlify, I'm gonna say env set, I'm gonna say MongoDB URI, and I'm going to add my MongoDB URI string. I'm gonna do that for each one of my environment variables. So for example, I'm gonna say Netlify env set MongoDB database, and I'm gonna say sample mflix, and I'm gonna look at my final environment variable and I'm gonna say Netlify env set, and I'm gonna say MongoDB collection, and I'm gonna say movies. Now you don't have to use the CLI for this. You don't have to use the CLI for a lot of things when it comes to Netlify. Uh, you could go directly into the Netlify dashboard and do stuff manually, but because we have the CLI, we're gonna do it all from the CLI to make our lives just a little bit easier. So we do have our environment variables added. And if we wanted to, at this point, we can deploy our website. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say Netlify deploy. I'm gonna publish the current working directory. It's gonna go through the Netlify build process and it's going to give me the website draft URL uh, when it comes to the actual build. So let's go ahead and see if we can access it. So if you take note of the URL, this is our actual Netlify project. This is not being served from localhost, but yet we still have access to the 10 movie records that we consumed 
from our Netlify function, which accesses MongoDB. So just to reiterate a few things when it comes to what we accomplished in this particular tutorial. Um, so we started from nothing. We created a new Netlify project all through the Netlify CLI. Once we had our project, we established a connection to MongoDB from a Netlify function. We did a few things that are function specific in the realm of actually uh, making sure our, our connection exists prior to trying to use it inside of a function. Because once again, when you're working with serverless functions, you don't want to establish a connection every time within your handler function, because then you'll end up with too many concurrent connections. And you don't want to necessarily assume that your connection exists already, because if that function goes down, uh, it may not exist. Um, so we just did a few different things to make sure that our connections existed. Uh, but after we did that, we had full control of accessing a, a backend without actually deploying our own, say, RESTful API, GraphQL API, et cetera. This is all serverless. It can scale in a serverless fashion, so based on usage. Um, and it's one of the many cool things that you can do with MongoDB, and in this case, Netlify. If you like this video, please take a moment to hit that like button and then subscribe to the MongoDB YouTube channel. Have a great day, everyone.